Ukraine's recently elected President Petro Poroshenko announced a peace plan for his divided nation last Friday. The move was followed by a ceasefire effort, but that's already been shattered. Still, Russian President Vladimir Putin has responded positively to the peace proposals, and there is some hope that Ukraine might be able to resolve the tensions that have played out mainly in the eastern part of the country. Meanwhile, Ukraine is about to sign a new trade agreement with the European Union this week, and there could be more fallout from that. For the latest, let's start with CCTV's correspondent, Stephanie Fried. She's in Kiev. And uh, Stephanie, only a day after the ceasefire was announced, a Ukrainian military helicopter has been shot. What can you tell us about this incident? Well, yes, this was on Tuesday that a military helicopter carrying nine people was shot down. All nine were killed. And that happened near the, the town of Slovyansk in eastern Ukraine. That's been a rebel holdout, and there's been heavy, heavy fighting during the past month between Ukraine's military and uh, the militia that are stationed there. Um, so this would look like a sign that the ceasefire is off, but no official announcement has yet come saying it's off. So it still holds, although, yes, there is back and forth. It is happening, according to the militia on, the, on in the east. The Ukraine military is also firing upon them. But effectively, technically, there is a ceasefire in place uh, until this coming Friday, two days from now. Now, Ukrainian President uh, Petro Poroshenko has announced a peace plan. What are the key points of that plan? Well, yes, indeed, and that is, Anand, it's a 14-point plan that has a tactical and a strategic, uh, strategic and tactical parts to it. In terms of the tactical, it, his plan calls for the militia to disarm, to vacate the public buildings that they took over, to leave the city, cities that they took over in eastern Ukraine, and free hostages in return. They'll get safe passage, those who came from Russia back to Russia, according to the president. And he's calling for a 10-kilometer buffer zone between Ukraine and Russia. The strategic elements are constitutional reform, a new uh, set of parliamentary elections for those in the East, uh, also reallocations of funding to the regions and the municipalities, decentralization of the government, uh, more authority that would mean for the East, and economic de development aid to the East and to the South. So essentially, that's the plan, and that's in addition to this ceasefire plan. And those are pretty much the points of that plan. Right. Pretty comprehensive. But when we look at what is being asked for from the rebels here, uh, disarming the rebels, vacating buildings, etc., um, are the rebels really going to respect this plan? I mean, does it have a chance of uh, ending the violence? Really not likely, and especially in light of the fact that we're seeing uh, continued violence between the sides, despite a, a ceasefire, uh, a call for the ceasefire. Now, that was a unilateral call on the part of President Poroshenko, but we're still seeing that, it, that the fighting is ongoing. Also, there is the sentiment that ideologically there are many, many differences between the East and between uh, the government in Kiev. Uh, one of the central points that was left out of that peace plan was a language uh, stipulation, and they've called on that numerous times in the East. They want Russia to be Russian, to be the official language in the East. That was not there. Also, there is the understanding that once this ceasefire ends on Friday, there will be a resumption of military action on the part of Ukraine's military at uh, at, at the summoning of President Poroshenko. Already, there's a tremendous amount of disbelief, if you will, in the Kiev government here. There have been many, many civilian deaths. So that is only fomenting more animosity in the East, among the rebels. So really, really not likely that this would stick or this would hold or go forward. Anand. Right. Stephanie, what about the deployment of Russian forces? NATO uh, is telling us that those forces have not withdrawn. President Putin says the forces have withdrawn. Are there forces close to the Ukrainian border, Russian forces? There are indeed, according to the reports that we're getting, and, and, and those are numerous. And, and a day after this peace plan was introduced and the ceasefire was announced, ironically, uh, President Putin announced uh, a, a, a beefing up, if you will, a combat alert along the border. There were some military exercises that took place there. So there has not been a pullback. At the same time, the parliament or the upper parliament in Russia has voted to pull back from 
from the decision or the announcement that Russia could uh, defend its, its stance or defend its position within Ukraine, i.e. take military action, and that, um, that was coming today. However, that's a decision that could be revoked. It's a goodwill gesture on the part of Vladimir Putin. But in short, yes, there are still troops along the border, and uh, it doesn't look like they're going to withdraw, at least not for the time being. Thanks, Stephanie. Stephanie Fried there from Kiev.